Hi everybody, what's up? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and I am here today to review and recommend The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. This novel won the Man Booker Prize in 2011, and oh, let me just say right away, I gave it five out of five stars, and if you know me at all, you will know that I am very stingy and very careful with my five-star ratings. I... In, I'm a control freak, obviously. So in order for me to give five stars to a book, the book has to amaze me and dazzle me on a purely objective literary standpoint. You know, the character development, the setting, the, uh, the, the, the writing, the language, uh, the themes, all of that business. But on top of that, there has to be something extra. That extra, hmm that punch that will elevate the book from being a purely really great four-star book into the heavenly realm of five stars. And immediately upon finishing this novel, I knew that this was that type of book. It was just perfect. It was amazing. I really can think of only a couple of novels that have left me with the same kind of feeling and, and, and just my, my reaction to this book was just, oh. So to very quickly summarize the plot, this is the story of a man who is in his 60s and there are some events that happen in his life that make him look back on his earlier days uh, in when he was in school, when he was a teenager. We follow him as he you know, was like in high school and we see him with his group of friends and we sort of see the story of this man's life. Um, that's all I want to say because I think this is a book that the less you know, the better. It's a book that surprises you. Um, it's not like your typical, it's, it's not like a mystery, suspenseful thriller or anything like that. It's purely literary fiction at its finest. But the way that he writes, the way that Julian Barnes tells you this story is he is absolutely at the height of his powers. He really is in command. He plays with you. He is kind of, well, the character is kind of a, a an unreliable narrator and he just plays with you. And when you reach the ending of the novel, you really get the feeling that the, the, the character himself has of not really knowing if the way that he told you the story, the way that he remembers his own story, is really faithful to what actually happened, the actual facts. So that leads me to the themes. I There are many themes in here, and all of them are explored magnificently, but if I if I had to say just one main theme, or, 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 or the one that I thought was the most significant one for the story, I think it's the theme of uh, looking back, the th of memory and of history. There's a lot of talk about what history is and you know how we tell ourselves our own histories and other people's histories um, when we don't really have the bigger picture, the big picture or the complete picture, the complete puzzle, and no one can have that complete puzzle because that complete puzzle as a concept in and of itself is impossible to to get uh so uh th that the book really revolves around that idea of of the time and and memory um and uh you know how we experience ourselves uh, whenever we are examining our own life um, when we are looking back into our past and when we're looking ahead into our future and all of that now all of those things that I just said kind of make it seem like this is a very boring, very literary book, very wordy and very elegant. It is incredibly wordy and incredibly elegant, and the writing will devastate you because it's so beautiful. Um, it will make you jealous and envious uh, that someone can write as great as he can. But it's not boring. It's not dense at all. I found this book just riveting and fascinating and I needed to read on and on and more and more and more. I ended up reading this book in one day and a half. Um, 
and it's not very long, it's 163 pages, but it's so engrossing and so captivating. There is a kind of mystery going on, there's this, a, a kind of uncertainty going on that you, alongside the character, you want to try to solve and, and figure out what really happened in the past. So there's a kind of mystery going on and that propels the story forward and it makes up for an amazingly fun reading experience. But it's not the type of, you know, thriller that I am uh, making it sound. It's not a thriller. It's a purely literary fiction at its finest, um, written by a man who writes like God. I do have to say that when I finished reading this book, I just knew that I am going to have to read it a second time because there, at, at the very end, I think in the last page, uh, we are provided with some information that kind of colors the entire book in a different way. And I, it's not that I need to read it again. It's not like I don't get what happened and I need to go back and figure out what really happened. It's not that, it's just that having puzzled, having put all the pieces of the puzzle together, having had the big picture at the end of the book, I want to go back and re-experience the entire novel having that information already to see if I can have a different, more complete experience and if I can pick up on some clues and, 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 and pieces of the puzzle that maybe he threw in there and I just didn't notice uh, on the first reading. So yeah, I really want to read it again. Not right now, I'm gonna wait a while. Um, but yeah, that's all I want to say right now. Those are my thoughts and my opinion. If I gather more, more thoughts on this, I will be sure to report back when I do my recent reads, including this book. So that was The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. Five out of five stars. An amazing book. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have read it. What did you think of it? If you want to read it, why? Anything that comes into your mind, I am Just One Reader and thanks for watching.